as a rapper, you signed to a label and, and the label, major label, might have different vision than yours. Their vision is basically always, let's make as much money as possible. But you also see that what I don't agree with, um, not totally agree, I mean, he's, he's an expert in this because he's an artist himself. But what you also see, uh, there is a, I wouldn't say a con- counterculture, but there are other ways to to make the music you want to make. Um, and also gain the, have the financial gains with that. You don't have to, s- they always say, use this word. I hate to use it, but let's use it for, for lack of better alternatives, sell out your vision. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can name guys like Tech9 who, who, who has been making for more than 20 years now, has his own label, does everything by himself and has made a lot of, a lot of money with, with, with his vision. Just by aligning his actions with his vision, he didn't end up in the blind alley. But if your actions contradict your vision as a rapper, you might really end up in a blind alley. Because when the contract is up and you're not sticking, as in you're not being, your, your music isn't selling because you're not relevant anymore, the label might drop you. First of all, they sign you for a cheap number, um, for a very low number. After that, they drop you, and then you're stuck on your own. You have to restart everything again. RJ, would you say that people should choose their vision well, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna make it a all or nothing because I can ask you: Should you always choose your vision above, well, above money? But that's not the right uh, question. Should you always at least align your actions with your vision, or have a a plan tied to that? So let's say. You sign as a rapper first with the you finesse you finesse a label and gain the supporters out of that and then turn that into something else. How 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 should you someone go about that to align their actions in this case to not end up in a in a blind alley? Uh, I think with regards to something like that, it's good to have, if you're a creative, you want to have the creative freedom. And to have the creative freedom, sometimes you need to say, you know, it's like, it's, it's all about leverage. So I would say it's, do you want, do you want to keep grinding on your own, keep trying to make it on your own, or do you want to use someone's platform? Nowadays, you see that, you know, uh, I was at the beach uh, a couple of months ago, and a Mm -hmm. song was playing. And I was told that the song is apparently like a summer hit, but that it was from a TikToker or a YouTuber who dropped it and now it's like a summer hit. So he's getting all the earnings, everything for him. Yeah, of course the platforms, he would need to pay something, but at least he doesn't need to go through a label. A label. Now, if you have that leverage, then, or if you're willing to work for that re- leverage, uh, sacrifice for that leverage, then by all means do that. But when you're, let's say, working hard years, 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 year in, year out, and comes a point in time where someone offers you 
<laughs> the pot of gold, or at an least what things, what you think, what you think is a pot of an gold. opportunity. Then you're, okay. you know, you're likely to take it. In my mind, and I don't know why, as I understand the the music business. From what I understand, when a label signs you, they will give you money, but that money is basically a loan which you would need to pay back. Yeah. So, Again, and if your cool. albums don't sell enough, you're in debt. <laughs> and if your album sells just enough, or let's say a lot, you would you really need to pass that threshold for it to be profitable. But if you hear like a lot of things that like these labels, they, they decide when they're gonna drop your album. So maybe you think the streets, the streets, the streets are hard now and we need to drop it now. But if the label tells you, well, no, then you, it's, it's gonna be very difficult for you to I mean, you're in, you're in a, it seems like you're in a golden cage. That's yeah. what it seems to me. Well, well, sometimes it's not even golden. <laughs> sometimes it's copper. It's copper, <laughs> copper cage. Yeah. Sometimes it is. Yeah. 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 So I think definitely that um, my, preference i'm a long game type of person so my preference would always be to keep pushing try to do as much as possible on your own or with your own team uh, or to strike deals where you have because you have certain labels which are not mainstream labels but where you can let's say keep a bigger part of your money. So I would say try to do that. That would be, it's very easy to say because it's a diff difficult and competitive area, of course, but that would be my my advice, especially if you're a young person. If you're mm -hmm. older, then, you know, I do understand you don't have that time to, to grind as much as possible. What you're also seeing now, KR, is, for example, NBA players. Releasing music? They have their podcasts. No, they Ooh. want to do something profitable. Okay. So they have their... <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> NBA players, they have their, their own podcasts, you know? Why not? You know, start, 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 branding, start branding yourself now. Everyone I remember... Yeah, I remember uh, Draymond Green who got into an altercation and while the mainstream media are you talking about are you talking about altercation on the one sided punching yeah the punching is what I mean <laughs> that was what there was not there was a one side <laughs> well altercation uh, yeah we well, continue sorry sorry but so Draymond basically went on his show mm. and gave an explanation. I think it, I think he did it more, more times. Oh, he also did it once where it was the first game. If I can recall, it was, a, it was a, uh, the first game of the NBA finals of, of uh, last year. Mm. If I'm not mistaken, the referees called something or something. I don't recall something happened and he went on his show and gave an explanation. And what's great about that is because it's your content, you can control it. No you one's there to narrative. ask you. Yeah, you can control the narrative. No one's there to ask you questions to, to screw you cool. over, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Guys, so that would be my comments, advice. Put in the comments what, what uh, uh, the, the thing that happened during the, the finals that RJ couldn't think of. Maybe you guys know it. Please put it in the comments. Yeah. I I think I think it's also it's it's double sided. You can control the narrative uh, as as an active player because um, 
it's it has been known to 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 athletes that um, they always get kind of cornered by by the media because they want to run with a certain narrative. But it's also indeed, like you said, it's branding. A lot of people are looking at what happened with Pat, Pat McAfee show. Yeah. Pat McAfee, for you guys who don't know, he um, he started uh, his own podcast. Well, well, technic- well he, he quit. He retired as a kicker in NFL to start his own, his own podcast. People said he shouldn't do that. He should stay kicking. His friends are not good friends because they should tell him he should continue kicking. He grinded it out. And last year he got, I think, a 200, 100, 200 million dollar contract with one of the big uh, betting uh, platforms. For his Draft podcast, Kings? no, not DraftKings, uh, FanDuel. Oh. So, so you can you, a lot of times you can you can. I mean, I watch it as well. I'll be honest; it's a very very entertaining show. Um, but you can leverage that into during your career, and and in this case, even after, to have an own podcast and to bring it back to to music. I think that. You see guys like Russ, who, who's a very well-known rapper these days. Seen him also grow as a as a as a rapper, early days when he released uh, his mixtapes. But he he built basically built leverage. He he was grinding a lot of times, releasing music, getting traction. To the point right now, he's independent, making his own money. He signed a distribution deal, so he has better leverage, of course, to to um, to negotiate. Because a lot of times, when you're not a known rapper or you don't have uh, traction, they will give you very bad deals, very bad deals. Um, and by grinding, go with your own vision, get people to. To, to, to align with you, give, have a positive message because I think Russ, Russ's music is very positive. People, people really like his stuff throughout the world. And look where he is now. He's considered one of the well-known rappers who's actually making making money off his, his craft. Yeah. So yeah, guys, that's um, that's our take on the um, the video of Danny Brown, his visit to uh, to the Joe Rogan podcast. I think we uh, we had a pretty good uh, discussion about this. How how you can avoid having a conflicting actions versus your vision as a artist. Try to build your your leverage and and. When you're in that room, that meeting room, you can ask for more. Otherwise, you might end up in a blind alley. 